In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the formulas needed for stratified random sampling. Stratification is a strategy that we use whenever there's heterogeneity in the variable that we're interested in. So for example, on this landscape, instead of having the same uh, mean number of points per quadrat across the entire landscape, the landscape part of the left-hand part of the landscape has a higher uh, number of points than the right-hand part of the landscape. And we can still take a simple random sample from this landscape, but if we do that, it will turn out that we'll get a, a less precise estimate than if we account for the heterogeneity. So, for example, previously with a homogeneous landscape, we had a coefficient of variation of around 20%, but if I do that same exercise now, I get a coefficient of variation of 32%. That's the impact of uh, ignoring the underlying heterogeneity. Sample, the estimates are still approximately unbiased, but um, the problem is they're less precise. So if we know that ahead of time when we're designing our survey, we can um, try and account for that by doing stratification. So a stratified random sample, essentially what we do is we take the sample frame, that group of sample units, that's everything that we're going to sample from, and we break it into pieces that we think are relatively homogeneous or compared to the entire sample frame. We call those strata. A single strat, uh, one is a stratum. Obviously, this requires some prior knowledge about those areas because you really need the, that stratum. You need some variable that's going to tell you which of how uh, you know what is correlated with the thing that we're interested in. So you require some prior information. Oops, I forgot to update this slide. I'm using L now for the uh, number of strata. And essentially, what you do is you you take your sample. Um, from your stratification, and then you're going to calculate weighted averages of the mean and the variance. So for the mean, we use this formula. We calculate the sample mean within each stratum, and then essentially we uh, sum them up and multiply by the uh, number of sample units in each stratum divided by the total number of sample units. That gives us a weighted mean for the whole area. The variance, we do something similar. We've got um, the variance, our sample variance here as within a stratum H, and the um, number of sample units in that stratum divided by that. So that's giving us you know, the variance of our sample mean, Y bar H. And sorry, my dog just decided to try and lift my hand off the keyboard. Corny, enough. Um, and then we multiply by, again, this proportion, NH, oops, NH, corny, no, NH over N. Um, but this time, because we're still dealing with the variance, we square it and we add them all up. This additional term in here is what's called the finite population correction. And that's because when we're dealing with stratified samples, we often switch to sampling without replacement. And so we have to uh, put in this finite population correction term to account for that. Makes, in fact, our variances are a little more precise with sampling without replacement. But one more equation to deal with. So they're just weighted averages uh, is, the, is the easy way to think about these formulas. They look complicated, but they're not really. So we still have the question about how many sample units do we want to take, but now we have two new questions. We have to decide how many strata to form, or strata, yeah, strata, um, and how many sample units per stratum to allocate. So let's have a look at some of those questions. So first off, how many strata? We're going to want at least two because if we don't break it into at least two pieces, then we've got we're back to a simple random sample. And you probably don't want more than six. There's diminishing returns for um, stratifying into finer and finer levels. And there are more complex sampling schemes that can use a continuous variable in, in order to um, draw your sample. 
And we're going to choose a stratification variable, and we're going to assume it's correlated with the thing we want to estimate. And ideally, it's something that we can measure a priori. Well, in fact, not ideally. We have to be able to measure it without going out and doing our sample. So it might be a, a habitat type that we can get off of a GIS layer um, or something along those lines. Uh, the strata can also be different sizes. By that way, I mean each stratum does not have to have the same number of sample units in it as the other strata. So we need to be able to, uh, that doesn't particularly matter. So now we have to decide how many samples per stratum. So the simplest thing to do would be to allocate our samples proportional to the relative number of sample units in that stratum. So a stratum that's bigger, that has more sample units in it, gets more observations. Um, that might not be the best strategy if the um, strata have different variances. So if some strata have a higher variance in the thing we're interested in than other strata, so that it's not just in the mean, but different variances, then um, we're going to want to increase the allocation of samples to strata that have higher variance. That's called the name and allocation. And then the optimal allocation is similar, but also adds the cost of sampling, which might not be equal. So name and allocation will be optimal if it doesn't matter, you know, the sampling is the same cost wherever you are, whichever stratum you're in. But if that's not true, then you need to do something slightly different. So the proportional allocation is pretty simple. We just have the number of sample units in a stratum H. We divide that by the total number of sample units, which is just going to be the sum of, of the number of units in all of the L strata. That can give us a fraction between 0 and 1. We multiply by our sample size, and that tells us how many units to put into each of our strata. So that's if the variances and the costs are equal across all strata, that will give us the, that allocation will give us the smallest possible variance. If the variances are not consistent, oops, jumped ahead too far. If the variances are not consistent, then we have a slightly different problem. Uh, but it's again pretty much the same thing. We're going to calculate a quantity for each stratum. In this case, it's the number of uh, uh, units. In the stratum. We're going to multiply it by the variance of the sample mean for that stratum, or sorry, the standard error, the standard deviation of, the, of that. And then we sum that quantity up on the bottom over all strata. Again, that's going to give us a fraction between 0 and 1 for each stratum. Multiply by n, and there you go. Clearly, we need prior information here because we have to know already what the, what the standard deviation is of our means. Um, we, that, that requirement may seem a little bit onerous, um, but it's not as bad as it seems. Um, it, we may have some pilot data that we can use to calculate these quantities, or at least estimate these quantities. Um, but even in the absence of that, you often have prior information about, um, where things are more variable. And in many cases, in ecological data, places with higher means are going to also have higher variances. So we want to, um, we, can, we can do a lot of different things. So, and because we're, we're normalizing down here, the absolute value of this matters um, uh, a lot less than the, um, than the relative values. I just realized that's not entirely true because we also then are multiplying by the number of units in the sample. So it does have a, it, it, it would be good to have at least a, a notional idea of their absolute magnitude, but relative magnitude is going to affect the application more, um, especially if the number of units, excuse me, number of units is equal. <clears throat> and finally, the optimal allocation looks similar again. We've still got NH times S Y bar H, but now we divide each of those quantities by the square root of the cost of sampling a habitat, uh, a sampling a unit in that stratum. And then again, it's the same thing. We normalize that and multiply by N. And those are going to give us, uh, those are the formulas for finding uh, our 
optimum allocation of sample units across strata.